So like one hour in the morning and then one hour in the evening. That's what was recommended. Yes, that's what I thought I should do. No, but it's did, like did, did you consult <laughs> anybody before you started that? No. I didn't. We we just registered at the gym, so we were just going and then we would join the I think the cardio exercises, the aerobics, the aerobics yes, and then we would dance. But I thought personally I didn't need that. That's what I thought, cause looking at my body, I thought I didn't need the aerobics. Like I just need. No, uh, so. so first of all, everybody everybody needs cardio, mm-hmm. because aside from the fact that cardio is one of the tools you can use to lose weight, you you need cardio to keep your heart healthy. I don't want to lose weight. No, I'm not saying you should lose weight or you want to lose weight. I'm just saying that most people see cardio as a tool to lose weight. Exactly. But cardio is actually for endurance. It's cardiovascular exercises. So they are building cardiovascular endurance, which everybody needs. Mm. So they literally put some stress on your heart to supply oxygen, oxygenated blood to the rest of your body. Yeah. By so doing, the muscles of your heart get to work extra than they do on a normal day. I didn't know all that. So if, if they are working extra, you are building the, the muscles of your heart. Because the heart is a muscle. Seriously? Yes. So from the atria to the ventricles, yeah. as they are contracting and um, expanding, you are building them. So you put that stress on the heart, it gets to work extra, and then you get stronger heart muscles. So mm. when there is the... I mean, I don't know if you've been ever chased by a dog or you've had a near-death experience where maybe a car nearly knocks you and you had to quickly run out of the way or something. Yeah. yeah, so if you don't have good cardiovascular system or cardiovascular endurance, chances are right after that short sprint or short run, your heart will feel like it's about to fall out of your chest. It's true. So everybody needs it. I mean, as you're aging, your muscles start to get weaker. So if you strengthen your heart, your heart will serve you best or in optimum uh, condition for a longer period of time so, so if i want to gain sorry if i want to gain weight what are some of the exercises i must do <laughs> <laughs> well there, there are it. so basically the same exercises you can do to lose weight mm-hmm. can be done to gain weight okay. with a little um adjustment okay so for instance um Let's say you go to the gym and you want to lose weight. Let's start from losing weight and we come back to gaining weight. Yeah. Uh, your gym instructor can ask you to do squats, strength training. The whole idea is that when you do strength training, you are building muscles. And muscles are active tissue. So if you compare two individuals, and one has less muscles, the other has more muscles, mm. at rest, the one who has more muscles is burning more calories just by existing than the one who doesn't have as much muscles. So if you are trying to lose weight, the more muscle you have, the more efficient your body is at burning calories. So even if you are eating at the same rate, the same number of calories, the person who has more muscles will lose faster than the person who doesn't have. Seriously? Yes. So you mentioned squats. Mm -hmm. When I perform squats, does it make me lose weight? Or I should gain something? Because we do that to gain something, but in the long run, (laughs) we don't get it. We'll come to that. So basically, if I ask you to perform squats, yeah. um, not necessarily to build your glutes, but mm-hmm. it's a lower body exercise. Exactly. Uh, the squat targets literally every part of your, your lower body. Yeah. Depending on how you're doing, it can also target your core. So I can ask you to do squat just for the, the fact that it's an exercise that is targeting all of your lower body muscles so that you are building muscles, you are burning calories in the process because the body is using energy to perform that activity. So you are burning calories. As you are burning calories, you are putting the body in a state where um, there's less calories than um, in your body than um, before you started or if you didn't do the exercise. Yeah. So the whole idea is that there's the, uh, there's something we call energy balance. That's the amount of energy you are consuming compared to the amount of energy your body is um, expending. So if you eat more calories, in a calorie surplus Mm -hmm. chances are you gain weight if you eat less calories that your body is burning you're in a calorie deficit you will lose weight weight. yes but but i think i was losing weight but you didn't want to lose weight exactly i don't Uh want to yeah so i ideally you can if if you want to lose weight you can just eat less Mm -hmm. and if you add the exercise to it that makes it faster 
So if you want to gain weight, depending on the kind of exercises you're doing, you should probably eat more. So if you're at, um, let's say if you are at equilibrium, your maintenance calories, that means you are eating the same amount of calories that your body is burning. So you are neither gaining or losing. Yeah. If you are in that state, wherever, whichever direction you want to go, you can just add or subtract from your diet and you achieve some yeah. results. So if you want to gain weight, just eat more. And if you want to lose weight, eat less. Eat less. Okay. Who are we talking to? Tell me. Who are we talking to? Uh-huh. <laughs> I didn't introduce person. you. I didn't introduce you. Alright, so um my name is Emmanuel. <laughs> he has another name, please. Well I, I have a couple of names. Okay. Um Emmanuel Alistoel. Hey, I um, didn't know that. Mr. Rails. So within the fitness circles I go oh, by Mr. Rails. So Mr. Rails. Yeah. So today we are talking to Mr. Rails. <laughs> Okay, so back to the first question. Mm-hmm. What must I know before I embark on a fitness journey? Uh, I think the first thing anybody should do before embarking on a fitness journey is to get clearance from their primary physician. Okay. So people have certain conditions that can be aggravated or made worse if you are not careful in the gym. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've heard that people have had uh, heart failures in the gym. People have um, fainted in the gym. Pe- people have even died in the gym. Okay. Understand? And they go there to try and get healthier, get better, get mm-hmm. fitter, and they end up um, worse off than they went. So you should get clearance from your primary physician whether your heart is in a good state to exercise or not. And even if it is not, what what what's the recommendation? Yeah. So if your your heart is not in optimum state to do, let's say exercises at um, let's say about 70 to 90 percent of your your uh, maximum heartbeat yeah. then chances are you should start slow you get it but if you go to the gym especially if you don't have a personal trainer who is going to measure all of these things at baseline to know how to design a program for you that is safe and optimum you go people come to the gym they hop on the treadmill and that's all they want to do Exactly. Without without knowing exactly what they want what? to achieve, so I've I've had people come to the gym and they do a whole lot of cardio. Meanwhile, their goal is to gain weight or to build like muscles. Me. I didn't need the cardio. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I I thought. I think I confronted my the gym instructor about that, but just I think I wasn't getting much attention. Probably I should have just you know paid him more to just pay attention well, yeah. to me so I, that that's that's a key thing mm-hmm. so um i would recommend that anybody who is starting out a fitness journey should get a personal trainer at least somebody to explain the basics to you um even even aside from the basic like you know the, the body the body is designed to move but all not all the bodies are designed the same way yeah so depending on how your body is designed there's a specific way you should move which is optimum for you. Yeah. So if you are not moving in that particular way, chances are you you leave yourself uh, prone to injury. So the basic exercises like the squats, mm-hmm. uh, deadlifts, um, lots of exercises. <laughs> like. What's the pro- I mean, what's the right way to um, do a squat? Ah, uh, so to do a squat depend on the individual. You can. I think the, the first thing is your stance, how you're okay. standing. So You want to show us? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let me show you how I do a squat. Okay, so, should we go to... No, I think here is fine. Yeah, here is fine. Okay. So basically I stand with uh, my feet okay. about shoulder width okay. apart or slightly wider than shoulder width. Okay. Uh, That I can just point my toes slightly outward and that's good so I start a squat by keeping my upper body up okay. and then going down in this way so my shorts are limiting my movement else right. I would have been able to go a little lower so I can go all the way down this way and that is how I can so I will perform a squat must you go like beneath your um, knee joint it's it's not necessary but ideally 
a square should be at least um, your thigh should be parallel to the ground. Someone touched me like this. It's wrong. You see, you're falling back. Line. Okay. So, depending on what you're trying to get, right? Yeah. Some people will depending on um, how their body is structured, they end up leaning forward a lot. Mm -hmm. So, people will squat something that like way. this. The leg is still perpendicular, the tie is still perpendicular to the ground. Okay. But I realize that their torso is bent for it. Okay. And other people will squat and they are upright. Okay. So depend on your your joints, your hip sockets, um, ankle mobility is an issue. So some people uh, will squat and because they have ankle mobility issues, they can't their knees cannot go all the way beyond their toes. So they are somewhere here. And this is the lowest that they can go. That is a good squat. <coughs> because that's what their mobility allows them. But if they're able to fix their ankle mobility, then they can be able to squat and um, go lower on, on the squat. So, um, what has dieting, like dieting, <coughs> got to do with fitness? Everything. <laughs> it's, it's literally everything, because, um, I mean, I don't know if you've heard this, that apps are made in the kitchen. Apps? Yeah. Okay. For those who want visible apps, if you want visible apps, they say apps are made in the kitchen. Did they hear? <laughs> okay. But <laughs> well, that's what they say. But there are divergent views on that on that notion because um, the whole idea is that everybody has apps. Just that for most people, there's that a layer of fat me. covering it. Exactly. So it's not visible. So if you're able to get rid of that layer of fat, then it becomes visible. Okay. But not everybody's apps are as defined as the ones you see on magazine covers. Mm -hmm. So... Even though apps are made in the kitchen, they are also defined in the gym okay. or wherever you want to work out. Okay. Now let's talk about diet. I already talked about energy balance. Yeah. Eating as much calories as you're burning. <clears throat> so if you want to gain weight, it doesn't matter the exercises you do. If you are not eating enough to fuel your body to put on that extra, um, extra material, you can't gain weight. So people will be in the gym and they lift very heavy. Their strength will increase. So strength is different from um, gaining weight. So we have a uh, hypertrophy, which is literally your body adding more material. Okay. So for instance, if I do a bicep curl. What's that? Oh, <laughs> so these are your biceps. Okay. The, the muscles the over muscles here. here. Yeah. So there are two heads. There are two muscles that make up the bicep. That's why it's called biceps. Okay. So if you are doing a bicep curl, right? Okay. You are putting stress on the muscle. Mm -hmm. um, we we call it micro tears. Micro tears. So, yeah. So mm -hmm. you are literally tearing up the tissues. Very very small cuts okay. in the tissue. <coughs> now the body has to repair those cuts. As the body is repairing those cuts, mm -hmm. you have placed um, a demand on the, the muscle okay. to become stronger. As it's getting stronger, more material is added and it gets bigger as well. Okay. So if you are not feeding the body that material that should be added to the muscle, even though it's being repaired and it's getting stronger to accommodate the load, it won't get bigger. Same way if you are trying to lose weight and you are eating a lot. <laughs> They, you can do all the cardio in the world but you can do happen. all the cardio in the world you still won't lose the weight okay you understand so i uh, basically if you are if for instance okay let, let me make this more practical if mm -hmm. if your maintenance calories is around 2000 kilocals and you are eating 2300 every day <clears throat> and you want to lose weight chances are you won't lose weight you rather increase you rather gain more weight it doesn't matter the exercises you do. If you are burning 2,000 and you are eating 2,300, there's that extra 300 that is not being accounted for, which the body is going to be storing every day. How so, do you know? Let's go. So, just as I'm doing. That's good. Are you good now? Oh, I don't. Okay. Back up. <laughs> so you you're asking how do you know if you are eating 2300 yes. calories so basically you can track 
your your macros so the macronutrients are the main nutrients or main food groups that make up your diet so carbohydrates proteins and then fats and oils okay. so every food has a nutrient profile and the amount of calories it contains so for some foods it's already been calculated it's been determined and um, true molecular means okay. so if you take maybe 100 grams of corn it has a set number of calories depend on how you're measuring it and where the corn is coming from whether it's in the dry state or wet state it will differ <coughs> so if you are eating and you're able to measure the amount of food you're eating and you know the amount of calories contained per gram or per hundred grams of the food then you can easily calculate how much you're eating so if you take maybe a tablespoon of olive oil it contains a certain number of calories so if that's what you're adding to your food you know how many calories you've added to your food but in ghana it's difficult to track because exactly. i don't, I don't know how many people... calories are in a bowl of kenke <laughs> how many bowls of kenke do you eat in a day Me. if you're eating kenke oh it depends like depends many? on whether i'm in a good mood or in a bad mood okay when you're in a good mood and i'm in a good mood it depends Depends on whether the kinky is nice or not. Okay, when the kinky is not nice. If the kinky is not nice, okay. one. One. Mm -hmm. When it's nice. If it's nice, two. Two. Okay. But that also depends on the size of one ball. Oh, okay. So if it's a standard. Two CDs. You don't even have a standard kinky size standard. these days because every everywhere is different. Exactly. So if it's if it's a standard, uh, we let's just say there's a standard like my fist. Mm -hmm. Uh, my face is pretty standard. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like so two this is like two cities. Yeah. I can eat like two of that. Two. Yeah. I mean, when I'm when I'm in a good mood and the kinky is also very good, maybe three. I was expecting to say like five or oh, four. Oh no no no! I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat that much. Or what was your diet plan to achieve um this body? Um, it's been trial and error. Okay. Yeah, so I've I've gone through several phases of gaining weight and losing weight mm -hmm. till till uh, till um, this point. So <clears throat> I think I've actually gained up to like ninety nine kilograms before, okay. and then I lost about twenty of that in, in a space of two months to come back to seventy nine. Then I went up again, come down. So it depends on on how I'm feeling. Okay. Uh, I'm not a professional bodybuilder, mm -hmm. so I'm not working out to go on stage. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so my you. my goals for fitness are different. If I were training to put on muscle and have definition to go on stage, my my eating will be different. Mm -hmm. My training regimen will also be different. How many hours in a day do you work out? Um, maximum one and a half hours. Are you sure? Yeah. Like morning and evening? No, just both? morning. Just morning, one hour. Yeah. I mean, there are times I come back to the gym in the evenings when I'm feeling good and I just want to get a little extra in. Do you have people you train? <coughs> yes, I have a couple of clients. Is that what you do for a living? <laughs> no. That's. <laughs> okay. That's one of the things I do, but that that's not the main thing I do for a living. What else do you do? Uh, I'm a scientist. Oh. Oh, I have, I have I do a lot of things. I'm a scientist. I'm a businessman. Um, I'm a writer. I'm a poet. Oh, nice. Yeah. So a couple of a couple of things in my arsenal. Okay. All right. That's fine. And I, I'm also a professional student. <laughs>
in my notes in my work. So basically, that's that's how the day goes. Um, I don't I don't think about it that much. Mm-hmm. No, it's like it's already predetermined. I know if I wake up in the morning, I'm in the gym. Okay. After the gym, I take a shower. I'm in the office, and then um, goes on like were that. you like this before? Like your body, <coughs> like, or was there a transition? Oh, the <laughs> obviously, there's been a transition. Okay. How there's... many years did it take you for you to achieve this? If someone wants to achieve the same thing. Mm-hmm. I think I, I started actively working out ending of 2016. I, I worked out for about a month and then I stopped for a while. I mean, I actually went through the same process that most people are going yeah, through. Like, yeah. you go to the gym one month and then you're like, ah, okay, I'm, I'm not seeing anything. Then exactly. you, you lay back for several months and then you go back. Like, okay, this time I'm going to, I'm going to work out. Mm-hmm. And then still you don't see anything and then you go back. Then I come back again, like so. I've I've been through that process. I've I've been through that process where sometimes life gets in the way and you you don't work out for several several months to years. Then you come back. But I think um, since 2018, I've been I've been consistent. How do you know that um, whatever you want to achieve is working? Like when you start your um, fitness journey, how do you know that it's working? Uh, so you have to set goals. Okay. Yeah. So you have to set both um, short-term goals and long-term goals. And as you are going, depending on what metrics you are using to measure progress, you can know if you're gaining or losing. So for instance, if your goal is to lose weight, maybe you want to lose about 5 kg in two months, but your long-term goal is to be able to maybe run a marathon. That's somebody's goal. So within two months, you, I mean, you take your measurements, either daily or weekly of your body mass. If within two months you haven't lost those five kg, then you know that there's something that needs to change. How but even, this? okay, sorry. sorry, but even before the two months, you, if your goal is to lose five kg in two months, you should have like weekly smaller goals so are you hitting those smaller goals are you not hitting them as you are going i think every two weeks you tweak your either your diet or your exercise within a bit till the uh, two months and then if your long-term goal is to maybe run a marathon in after two years um, after one year are you ready to run half a marathon if not then you know something needs to be done and then the progress keeps on going like that cool how necessary is that taking protein shake or protein after um, working out because, after working out yeah it looks like it actually has a lot to do with the weight gain journey so protein is basically one of the macronutrients i mentioned the three carbohydrates okay. proteins and then fats and oils yeah. so if you remember i mentioned that when you when you have the micro tears in the muscles the body uses the material which is mostly protein to repair itself so protein is a nutrient protein is food it's not magic you can you can drink all the protein shake you want to drink but if you are not putting in the work to physically put a demand on the body it still won't work so there are people who go to uh, a supplement shop Mm -hmm. buy a, a tub of protein powder or protein shake and then they drink it for let's say two months and they are not seeing any results it's because you're your performance in the gym is not optimal <clears throat> and I always say that proteins uh, supplements basically are supposed to um, optimize or more like help you overcome certain obstacles so if you have a very busy schedule a daily schedule and you are not able to make enough time to eat enough to get all your calories in then you can use protein uh, shake to get to meet your protein um, target for the day can I eat? Um, sorry, can I take protein shake even when I don't work out? Yeah, it's food. It's like eating chicken. Chicken is protein. So if if you you want to if you want to get enough protein, mm-hmm. basically, if you want to get enough protein and you are not able to get that from your diet alone, nothing stops you from eating um, or taking protein shake. I read somewhere <coughs> that um, you take protein shake after working out because like after working out your muscles are ready to take in the, <laughs> the protein yeah you are so I, I think what you're talking about is the anabolic window okay so the the notion behind the anabolic window is that 
after your workout mm-hmm. like you said the, your muscles or your body is like in a state where it can readily absorb the protein exactly. for protein uh, for muscle building hypertrophy and what have you that's like within the the 45 minutes window after working out mm-hmm. but then studies have shown that long term it doesn't really um, do much okay yeah okay so, so ideally the the best time when your body rebuilds itself is when you are asleep so when you are in that state of deep sleep at the end of the day your lights are out your you are like you're really sleeping that's when the body repairs itself so it's not during the day when you are active so if you are you can eat all your all the protein right after your workout mm-hmm. but it's what happens at the end of the day okay. that determines whether the muscles get the nutrients or not so the body goes through so um, there's catabolism and anabolism mm-hmm. catabolism is when tissues are broken down and anabolism is when tissues are built up or you add more tissues like okay. you you are building so if the body goes through several stages of catabolism and anabolism throughout the day so what matters the most is at the end of the day are you in a net anabolic state or in a net catabolic state so if you're in a net anabolic state that means you've consumed more than the body has broken down then whilst you are sleeping if you have enough protein that you have consumed then the body can add more material to itself if in a catabolic state you've already broken down much of your tissues and you haven't fed it enough so there's the chance that you won't be building anything <clears throat> so basically so like you said uh, there's there's casein protein which uh is more like a long longer release protein hmm. so whey protein there are different types of protein yes. whey, whey protein is basically um the most commonest yeah. which the body is able to absorb readily because it's more bioavailable it's more available to your tissues okay. then there's casein protein that is uh, slow release so most people recommend that at night time mm-hmm. because the body absorbs that slowly so d- whilst you are sleeping the body is taking in um, slowly or gradually and then that can be used to build the tissues that you have broken down during the day I know you've spoken about that um, already, but what's your advice um, for those who want to those who want to gain weight? If you want to gain weight, lift heavy heavy metals. Is it really necessary to lift the metals? Um, yes. So yes and no, depending on where you want to gain. So I know, I mean, it's common among ladies to want to get bigger booties. That's true. But most <laughs> most ladies come to the gym and. All they are interested in is getting bigger, bigger bottles and wider hips. Does that disappoint you? Sometimes. Why? I feel I feel the gym is a place to, and let me use this word carefully, enhance yourself. Exactly. Not enhance yourself. So <laughs> it's it's a place to become better uh, physically, mentally. Um, so if if your only goal. Is to have bottles then I'm like it's it's not it's not a good goal enough so what what I do with my clients is that I, I help them set goals mm-hmm. because first of all they they hire me to be their trainer because they don't know what they are doing and exactly. they need assistance so I first of all question them what do you want to achieve some people come and say oh I want flat tummy Mm-hmm. Some people come and say, oh, I want a bigger chest. Some people come and say, I want wider hips. I want bigger bottles. Or mm, whatever their goals so are. That's exercising. Yeah. Enhance those body parts. Actually, like, it can. be real. It can. But not, not in most cases. No, in, in most in all cases if you do it right, you will. Mm-hmm. You actually. Yeah. So, like I said, it's they're all muscles. So if you put stress on a muzzle and you are feeding it enough material, it would grow. Okay. Because now it's like everybody wants to gain weight, yeah? Mm-hmm. But they want to gain weight at the right place. At the specific... That's the, that's, the, that's the sentence we use now. We want to gain weight at, at the, the right, right places. places. Yes. And you can. But I feel like that's... You can, but sometimes that's quite impossible because even though you are gaining the weight, mm-hmm. you also may gain tummy or yeah so it depends on how you're doing it exactly so it's easier to gain weight at the right places 
than it takes to lose weight at the places you want to lose weight. So let me explain. When you are losing weight, you don't tell the body where you want to lose the weight at. That's why it's, it's literally impossible when somebody comes and says, oh, I just want to lose my belly. You, you can't tell the body where to lose the weight. Sure. So as you are, you are, in a, you are in a, sorry, you are in a calorie deficit, that means you are consuming less than the body is um, burning. You give the body time enough to burn the fat. So it's literally reaching into your fat stores to fuel itself because you're not giving it enough fuel. As you are doing that, the body determines where to burn the fat first. Seriously? Yes. Um, like I said, you don't tell the body where to, mm. to lose the weight. So genetical, genetics plays a major role exactly. in this. So some people would lose their weight from their bellies first. Mm -hmm. And then they'll come and tell you that, oh, if you do these exercises, you lose belly fat. But it's just their genetics and their body saying that, okay, I want to lose my belly first. You can do all of those exercises and you still won't lose your belly fat. Chances are you are losing the fat around your shoulders, around your chest, around your back and in your face. But because you are focusing on just your stomach, you won't notice the changes around other parts of your body. Okay. You get it. Yeah. Some people will lose uh, weight in their thighs, legs and then their butt mm -hmm. before the stomach goes away. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's actually, I, I, had, I have a client who um, easily loses weight in her butt. So that person shouldn't lose weight. The person should lose weight, but whilst you are losing the weight, you do exercises that build your glute muscles. No. You get it. But they also don't want to strength train. Exactly. So when you say, oh, do do these squats, and like, no, I don't want to do squats. It's painful. Mm -hmm. Of course it's painful. If it was easy, everybody would do it, right? Okay. Yeah. So you, you can't tell the body where to lose the fat. But the good thing is, when you are building, you get to tell the body where to build first because now you have to put a demand on specific parts of the body so if it's your arms you, if it's your biceps you want to build bigger you don't go and do squats you do bicep curls if it's your triceps you do tricep extensions or tricep push downs and the body knows that okay these are the muscles that have been broken down this is where i need to repair and as you're repairing you're adding more material it gets bigger so if it's your buttocks you want to build up you do exercises that will make that will break down your <laughs> scratch that. So you you do you do you do exercises you do exercises that would cause the muscles in your glutes or your gluteal maximum to have these micro tests or to break down. And then when you are sleeping or you are in a state of sleep at the end of the day when the body is repairing itself, if you have given the body enough material, those muscles will be rebuilt or repaired, and more material will be added and they get bigger. When do you know that you are fit? When do you know you are fit? So I have I have a simple uh, test of fitness. So basically, if I am fit, I should be able to move my body in space and time. That is my metric. Other people can use different metrics. So if I can move my body in space and time, then I know I'm fit. If I can hold my body up this way, I think I'm fit. When do you know you are not fit? That you like you need help. You need oh, that that's that's very, that's very easy. That's very easy. <laughs> that's very easy. If you are climbing up a flight of stairs and your heart feels like it's is struggling to you know it, it's it's forcing to jump out of your chest, you are not fit. Mm. If if doing basic, I mean. Um, <coughs> If doing basic activities like walking, um, playing with kids, carrying groceries, if you are doing all of these basic things and you can't do them, then you are not fit. So you need to start some. You know, yes, definitely. You need to, okay. If you are if you are trying to lift something from a lower position to a higher position, maybe you are trying to stack up um, something on a shelf and realize. It well, if it depends on how much the thing weighs, okay. but if it's not something that is super heavy that requires two people, when you realize that you're unable to lift it, then chances are you're not fit enough. Okay. All right, I think I will. I will just um, end it here. Else, they are getting to know everything. <laughs> they have to reach out to you to get yes, the information. Yes, yes. So, where can they find you? 
Oh, um, they can find me on Instagram. They can find me on Twitter. Okay. They can. I have a YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Even though I haven't been posting content there lately, because of the shadow. Yeah. But yeah, my um, is the name is Mr. Reels. Mr. Reels, can you spell? So M R underscore R E A L S. Okay, we'll put that here for you to see. Yes. Uh, on Twitter, the S is double. Okay. Yeah. What's your final advice for anybody who wants to give up on their... Um, Don't give up. <laughs> what about those who want to embark on the fitness journey? Um, they can't find their hope. They can't find their hope. Yeah. It's it's a difficult question. It's it's Sometimes people who have been doing fitness for a long time, because now it comes natural for us, mm-hmm. we are... We are, we are, I mean, we are in a haste to say, oh, it's easy, just, just do it. But literally, just do it. It's not easy. And I know it's not easy, it's not but easy. just, just do it. Go to the gym. You know, the, the good thing is that every gym has instructors. <clears throat> so even if you are not able to, to pay for the person to, um, have time exclusively for you whilst you're there, yeah. there are, you can always ask them for advice mm-hmm. and they'll be more than willing to they'll be more than willing to give you the advice mm-hmm. also there are people like myself who are putting out good information yeah. uh, for both beginners and advanced people so you can follow us and then get some tips from there how to perform <coughs> sorry how to perform certain exercises uh, what to look out for how to even measure your progress so yeah and we post motivational information as well okay. so just do it do it <laughs> thank you Adam. most most welcome every exercise has a particular purpose yeah. so let's say for somebody who is trying to to lose weight one of the basic exercises you can do in the comfort of your home you don't even need to go out is let's say uh, jumping jacks high knees but if you have a skipping rope that's perfect the skipping rope literally works uh, a lot of muscles in your body from your calves to your shoulders to your heart so um, I think I'll perform the jumping jack. So <clears throat> you, you start this way. Right here. Like that. So as your legs open, you hop this way, your hands also come up. As you're hopping in, your hands come down. So now you we'll perform, stick to the, you uh, I was going to say we'll stick to the talking. <laughs> perform a jump. Okay. Let me put this for you. Sure, thank you. All right. So, okay, so my hand will go. You start up from here. Like this. Yes. Okay. Your feet a little closer. Okay. Yeah. So as you're hopping out, your hands come up all as the I'm way up. Out, so come up. Yes. Like and then back down. Okay. I'm going to do like three for you. All right. Let's go. Right. One. Two. Okay, now do another three, but a little faster. <laughs> All right, okay. Go. One, two, and three. All right, so now that's how to perform a jumping jack. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. Okay, and like too, and don't forget to share, and then leave your comments down below. Thank you, bye.